Good morning, everybody. I'm Rachel from Yuba Logics. So uh, I'm happy to uh, present on Yubico Plus updates, and it includes our supply and supply development plan. Next slide, please. Ah, OK. So as of today, and we have about 4.6 million doses ready for shipment. And as you may be aware, and we produce 2 to 3 million doses every month. So by the end of this year, we expect to have 10 million doses for shipment, available for shipment. So in 2023, as we are already awarded by UNICEF, the number of doses available for shipment would be 36 million doses, and we are committed to produce at full capacity to meet with in the 36 million doses of availability. And also, we are working on uh, expansion of both the drug substance and drug product now, and drug substance facility is expected to be pre-qualified in March 2024, but drug product facility is expected to be pre-qualified by you know, June 30, 2020, sorry, 2025. So there's a gap of one and you know three to four months. So I will explain this later, how we are going to fill this gap to make the number of doses available the most. So I will explain about the Ubico simplified development. And as you know, currently the Ubico Plus contains five distinct components, two Inaba and two Ogawas and O139. But Ubico S and it contains only two components, O1 Inaba and O1 Ogawa, and inactivated by a single method, formally inactivation. So if we have Ubico Plus, uh, Ubico S instead of Ubico Plus, and the price will go down and also the capacity will be increased up to the 30 by 38 or 40 percent. So international vaccine should they conducted clinical study, phase three clinical study in Nepal compared to you know, Chanko and the result will be available in the first quarter 2023, but we will have a key result in the beginning of November to see whether non inferior test has been demonstrated against Chanko or not. So if uh, the non-inferiority is demonstrated, and this is the regulatory pathway that we are thinking about for Ubico and S pre-qualification. So basically, uh, we are required to have licensure from our NRA, Ministry of Food and Drug Safety, to submit our dossier for pre-qualification. But what we are planning is that we have engaged with the WHO pre-qualification team for feasibility of a concurrent review, which means that Ministry of Food and Drug Safety of South Korea and pre-qualification team, they review together so they can you know, reduce the timeline for review and pre-qualification. So if a concurrent review is feasible, we expect that Ubico S is pre-qualified by the end of 2023. Otherwise, you know, it will be delayed by a year, so pre-qualification is expected by the end of 2024. And with the pre-qualification of Ubico S, and we are plan planning to submit our dossier for CTC pre-qualification of Ubico S as well. So under the, in the most optimistic scenario, we expect to have Ubico S pre-qualification and CTC pre-qualification pre all together by the end of 2023. And then this is the in the future in the production capacity. So as I mentioned before, and if we switch from Ubico Plus to Ubico S, the production capacity can be increased by 38%. So based on this and the availability of Ubico Plus, uh, okay. So as I mentioned before, and there's a gap of you know one year and three months. So to fill this gap, and we are thinking about hiring the you know, drug product CMO till the second uh, field finishing facility is pre-qualified. So the maximum availability of a cholera vaccine could be in 2024, in case of Ubico Plus, 58 million doses, for Ubico S, 80 million doses, and from 2025, Ubico Plus, 65 million doses, and Ubico S, 8 million doses, if there's demand for sure. Yeah, this is the end of my presentation and feel free to have any question if you may have.